everyone, as um, I've just been introduced. My name is Terry Lynn Murph. I work in the People Development Department at CTEC, so I'm responsible for staff training. So, um, historically within CTEC, we've always delivered the employment related services qualifications and also the employability services sector qualifications. Um, they're the specific ones for working within employability if you're not familiar. And we've not only delivered it to our own staff, we've also delivered it to some of our supply chain partners as well. Um, and this qualification, unfortunately, is due to uh, expire next month. However, I know it's being reviewed and due to be re-released. Um, but the issue that not only is that coming under um, review next month, but also that apprenticeship frameworks are going to be phased out by 2020. So that kind of put us in a position to think about, well, what do we want and need as a sector to really be able to give the employees that work within it the knowledge, skills and behaviours that they need uh, to be not only good at what they do, but brilliant and give them the opportunity to, to really excel. So, CTEC is a levy paying, paying employer, so it also presents the opportunity for us to think about well, how can we spend our levy and spend it on something worthwhile, not just a business administration, apprenticeship or a customer service, which as we know are good, but don't necessarily um, lend themselves to working within our sector, which requires some very um, specific skill sets. So these are just some of the motivations behind why CTEC decided to take the lead and become the lead employer developing the new um, standard and also um, why I now chair the group that, that leads through it. So just wanted to spend the next few minutes with you um, telling you about um, the Trailblazer, um, what, where we are at the moment and maybe what some challenges we might have um, coming ahead. I'm not going to do a Q&A session at the end because I don't think we have time, there's quite a few of you in the room. But if you do have any questions at all after this, please do not hesitate to come up and ask me or take my business card and then I can get back to you with further information. So, uh, just this slide here just talks um, a, a bit about the difference between the old <coughs> apprenticeship frameworks and the new standards. And as I said, the current um, employability qualifications that appear, underpin the, the old framework of the old apprenticeship system, um, not only does those qualifications come up for review, but also um, those old frameworks being phased out by 2020. So as I said, it, it sort of really provided us as a sector, not just CTEC as an organisation, but the industry, with an opportunity to really raise the professional standard of what we do. Take what currently works and build upon that. So we've therefore gone on to develop the Level 4 Employability Practitioner Standard. So this standard is for anyone who works with individuals, whether you call them service users, customers, clients, learners, everyone seems to have a slightly different one, but they're the same at the end of the day. Those who are really distanced furthest from the labour market, helping them to address and overcome those obstacles to secure and suitable and sustainable employment. And they really specialise in working with a, maybe a specific group of service users, or, or, um, a wide range of different um, types of individuals and uh, employability practitioners are those who really help to devise the strategies that help to address and overcome those multiple and complex barriers to work and to really improve their employability prospects with the end goal being to find employment or to progress in work if they already have it. So um, that's a kind of a snapshot of what the standard or who the standard is um, designed for. It takes approximately two years to complete and that I say approximately because an individual might have already been working in the sector for quite some time and therefore when that training provider does that initial assessment of that apprentice to see if they're suitable for the programme, they will be able to determine whether they've got some recognised prior learning already, in which case they might not need the full two years. However, we felt as an employer group we made the decision that somebody who is completely new coming into the industry needs the same sort of chance and access to be able to do this. So the two years is more of the maximum that we would see that it needs to take somebody very, very new to the sector. In terms of the uh, assessment methods that are used throughout it, so throughout the length of the apprenticeship, um, the training provider will really work with the apprentice to have them develop a portfolio of evidence where they have to work with a set number of service users to show that it's taken them from the very first stage of initial engagement and assessment right through to finding work, securing it and also staying in work as well. 
Um, so that portfolio of evidence will then be used at endpoint assessment, where the individual will then have to use that portfolio to do a presentation to the endpoint assessment organisation to really demonstrate and showcase that best of that work that they've done. So they don't necessarily need to go through every single thing in that portfolio, but it's a really good opportunity for that apprentice to be able to showcase the great work that they've done. The other part of it is also a knowledge test. So the real basic knowledge that we feel an employability practitioner needs to know about. So understand legislation, safeguarding, emotional intelligence, being able to understand the contracts that they work on. So that knowledge test is based on the sort of combination of multiple choice and short answer questions. And then also the other um, assessment method as part of the endpoint assessment will also include uh, an observation or an endpoint assessment organisation will come and observe them working with a service user. And um, the reason we chose those three assessment methods and we thought um, what a great individual we would have by the end of it if they could demonstrate and showcase all of that work that they can do with that individual right at the end. And really, the um, endpoint assessment organisation to be able to witness um, first hand and see that they know how to work with service users. So when they complete that endpoint assessment, they're really getting that amazing sign up to show that they are ready to work with customers. So that's a bit, of about, a bit about the standard um, itself. In terms of coming together as an employer group to deliver, deliver the standard, we, have a very, we had a sort of quite a really clear vision of what we wanted to achieve. Not only did we want to fill the void left by the old framework, as I've already mentioned, but we all wanted to also future-proof the training and the learning that they would undertake. Not just to give the advisor the skills that they need now, but the skills that they need for the future, including the knowledge as well and also behaviours that we expect them to demonstrate. I think this is really important, and, and we agreed as an employer group that it was really important, because of the changes in the landscape at the moment with the Work and Health Programme, devolution, local multi-agency type work, and also integrated approaches, all of which are included within the standard. We also wanted to further professionalise what we do, building on the great work that Scott's done and the IEP have, and also the old qualifications have done, but really to professionalise it even more. We also wanted to create transferable skills, um, and this comes with that multi-agency work. At the end of the day, working in employability, you need to have case management and behavioural change elements and skills. And then at the end of the day, they're also the types of skills that you'll see in other public services, such as housing, social work, youth work, probation. So by developing and delivering this standard, it also gives people the opportunity to have free, more movement um, in similar sectors, where at the end of the day, it's about changing people's lives. I already said as well about spending the levy on something <coughs> more effective and meaningful than some of the other standards that are already in existence and also have standards that fit and feel right, not just for now, as I said, but for the future too. And essentially, what we're all trying to do is also improve the social and economic impact of our services, but also to improve outcomes for the service user at the end of the day. So our journey as an employer group, and what a journey it's really been. So we started actually back in uh, January 2017, um, when both myself and Scott um, sort of said, we need to do something about this. Um, and luckily enough, there were loads of other employers who felt the same way too. So we created and started doing a lot of research and development and consultation to understand what people need now and also what we think people are going to need in the future in that frontline employability practitioner role. <coughs> and some real highlights came about uh, by March this year when we had our um, proposal approved by the Institute for Apprenticeships. But if anybody who knows anything about um, the trailblazer and the landscape of the IFA at the moment, that's actually quite an achievement. Um, we then went on to develop the standard and the endpoint assessment plan, which we submitted in August. And I'm pleased to say the standard was approved with some very minor considerations that we've already changed and resubmitted, and is literally due to be published on the Institute for Apprenticeships <coughs> website any day now. So if you visit it regularly, I recommend you go and have a look. At the moment, it will currently sit under the business and administration pathway much to my and Scott's uh, determination to try and get it sat elsewhere because um, there's also a care pathway. And when we were thinking about the types of individuals that are going to want to apply to do this apprenticeship, they are the individuals who want to help people. 
So if you want to help people, we thought logically people would go to the part of the website where the care standards sit. Um, so we are, we are campaigning hard to get it published under there, but it's a work in progress. And um, I think we've kicked a bit of a hornet's nest with the IFA because our relationship manager there has actually said to us several times, I'm still waiting to hear. And there's, it sparked a bit of debate, so um, from that I can tell that it, we've, we've, um, it's brought into question where some of the other standards now sit as well. Because what we don't want to do is cause people not to be able to access the standard because they can't get on the website. So um, we, we're due to resubmit and we are hoping for it to be ready for publication in January. Um, we're waiting to hear on the funding bound and also for final confirmation of the endpoint assessment plan. We've got a few changes to make on that, but that'll be done. So I'm really pleased to say that here is a snapshot of all of the employers that we have worked with over the um, time of that apprenticeship standard. And it's been a really great group to work with in terms of people being so passionate and enthusiastic about the work that they do and in terms of giving people the skills they need. Um, and at the whole of it is keeping the service user um, at the heart of it. So in terms of the next steps, we are waiting for uh, feedback, responding <coughs> to that feedback, and also um, we need to on board. We've got some endpoint assessment organisations already lined up. Are, are willing and ready to, to start doing that. So a training provider can start delivering this as soon as we get their endpoint assessment plan uh, approved um, and there are endpoint assessment organisations ready to already start that. So I know there's been some concern with some other standards where um, they've already been started but they haven't had one ready, uh, an endpoint assessment organisation ready but we're pleased to say we actually do have one. Um, but then it comes the, what I think might even be the harder part of what we've already done in terms of actually communicating and marketing the standard and getting the word out there that it's, it's about to be ready or is ready for delivery um, early in January. So I guess um, just to finish off is what does that mean for you guys and how can you help? Um, firstly is to shout about it. Um, I know in the room we've got a lot of uh, individuals and contacts and networks so it's all about thinking about not just how you guys might want to use the standard within your own organisations for your own employees, but those you work with your partners at the end of the day, it's all about creating um, a great sector for people to be able to help support them back into work. So if you have any um, information or need more information about it, want to help provide us with apprentices, want to um, give any feedback on the standard or even make introductions, then please feel free to come and speak at the end to either myself or Scott for more information. So um, that, I'm going to leave that there. Hopefully I stopped my, my time slot okay. Um, but yeah, if you've got any questions, just come ask me. I'll set myself up. Thanks. <laughs>